So the project I've come up with today is based around this Beofang uh, BS888 radio, I think it is. I can't remember. I've had these a little while. And they're a useful little radio. I've programmed them to PMR frequencies on low power mode, so I'm hopefully staying within the law. And I've got a few of these. We use them at work occasionally. And the kids like to play with them as well. And these are pretty rugged and useful for that both those applications. But these come with some drop-in chargers, and uh, yeah, they're a bit horrible, really. Uh, first of all, they've got this uh, figure of eight single insulated cable um, going into them, and I think that's technically illegal in this country. I think they need to be double insulated, but I might be wrong on that. Uh, it's got one of these generic uh, European plugs and the death adapter um, to plug it into. So I'm not best keen on using these. And when we look on the back, the output, it says, is 5 volts and 500 milliamps. And 5 volts and 500 milliamps is probably a bit much because this is a lithium-ion battery pack. Uh, 3.7 volts there, 1,500 milliamp hours claimed on the label there. So delivering 5 volts DC into this battery... It's probably not the best idea to be honest. So let's open it up and see what's inside here. Okay. Screw out. Right. Not much to see there. Mains coming in. Circuit board. Let's take this circuit board out. Just two screws. And okay, so we've got a little transformer circuit here, and we've got the positive and negative going to the battery, an op amp, a couple of transistors. Um, there's not much intelligent circuitry on there, is there, to tell when this battery is full? Um, yeah, and there's a bi-colour LED there which shows when it's charged or charging. So it obviously does work it out somehow. Anyway, I don't think I want this in here anymore. I'm going to remove the wires going to the positive and negative. Luckily the positive is marked red, so that's easy to remember. And I might take out the bi-colour LED as well and see if we can use that. Because my intention is to put a TP4056 board, uh, here's five of them, so I'm going to put one of them in the back of here, hopefully it'll just about fit in that hole, or a bit of gentle persuasion and we can make sure it does, and the battery cables can go straight into the battery terminals on here, and possibly I could remove the LEDs and use this bicolor LED here in the case as before. Um, so that's the plan, because if I charge this from 5 volts USB, well, then I can do that in the solar shed, and these radios can be solar powered. So first things first, let's get these wires out. See if I can... Got your fingers. There's the positive... And that one, that one, I think. There's the negative. So I'm thinking this should be really rather easy. We can just mount these boards with a bit of uh, foam double sided tape. In fact, let me just snap that one off. We can tape it up and it'll just sit in that hole. Might need to make that a little bit wider. But that will keep it nice and tight, and then we've got access to uh, do the wires, solder the wires, so this should be really easy. So uh, sadly I won't be able to use this LED, it's common cathode, and I need um, common anode, really, for what I'm doing here, or two LEDs entirely, but uh, I'm not too worried about the LEDs. But I do need to think about this resistor here, R3, 
Um, that's the one that sets the current that we're going to charge the battery at. And this, by default, has a 1K resistor, I believe, there, which is uh, gives one amp of charge. Um, but we'll, we'll remember it was quoting a 500 milliamp charge on the back of the case, and the battery is only one and a half amp hours, so I think I need to change that. And as it so happens, I do have some 2K resistors, and hopefully I can bodge one of those on there and charge at 500 milliamps rather than a full amp. So let's give that a go. So job number one is heat up this resistor and try and remove it. There we go. There it goes. So I've tinned the legs of this resistor and I've tinned the circuit board and hopefully there's one there's the other and I've now got a 2K resistor on my TP4056 module. Right then, so let's connect the charging dock to the charging circuit. There we go. Excellent. So now we just need to make this hole a bit bigger at the back. Shouldn't be too difficult. Go. Should be big enough. And with a few layers of that foam tape, I think it's designed for holding number plates on, to be honest, but uh, it's very sticky and uh, adds some packing. And we can stick that in there. Oh, I don't think that's too bad. So now with my uh, modification there, I can plug a micro USB cable in. Actually, you can see the light through that hole. Uh, not through the one at the front though, sadly. And uh, we can plug in a battery and charred it up and uh, yep yeah, so the light's gone red on the inside so now I can charge my radio battery without that horrible cable and death adapter and I can do it from the solar shed hopefully you've enjoyed this little video if you did give me a thumbs up uh, subscribe if you can and I'll see you next time thanks for watching